I'm gonna be completely honest. Over the course of 20 plus years, watching digital grow from its infancy to where it is now, I've come to realize that most photographers are not being taught any sort of nuance. You're being given a sledgehammer, a guitar to beat the photo over the head with. At least it's musical, right? It has beauty to it. But guess what? Most of the time we're driving sliders, we're pushing things too hard. And the worst is we're so used to the sledgehammer effect in digital photography that most of the time we don't even know how to see the nuance. Color and who does it better might be one of the most hotly debated things in photography from whether the white balance is correct, whether you need a card, whether it's too red, green, yellow, or magenta. Why is my hair not combed? I look like crap. Okay, that's better. On digital, even shooting in pure raw, there's slightly differences in the way our sensors capture color. And back in the film days, film was basically our presets. We chose the film we wanted based on the look we wanted to get. Digital tends to be used kind of like a sledgehammer going way too far, way too fast. Well, today I'm excited because I actually just did yet another free update to Filmist, and it only includes one preset, which I'm going to show you today. It's the Fuji Pro 160. But even if you don't use Filmist, we're going to talk about some color things today that are going to be important in the way you edit photos, and they're going to help you have more confidence in your editing. And let's look at this one new preset, this new film that's in Filmist 2.3. And for those of you that do not use Filmist, let's look at how these nuances in color and how just little slight shifts can be better than using white balance and make your edits even better. And yes, I will put a link in the comments to the free sampler pack of Filmist where you can play around with the nuance and the magic of editing digital with film. We're gonna start from raw. If you use Filmist, you know that a longtime favorite has been 400H, right up there with the Portra 400 and 160. Fuji's 400H, now discontinued, like most of the other great films, was really phenomenal and had distinct characteristics, but, its counterpart was 160S, or its later name, 160NS. There's no edits done to this. This is raw out of camera. And it looks pretty good, but it needs a little bit of work. We have one strobe over there from the right. I'm going to go here to Portra 400H. Now you can see, if you actually start doing this, why I love film. This does edit the photo. And we could then go in and I could use something like the AI film retouch, I could use elegance, I could do different things to further enhance this portrait. But just at its base level, the colors, the nuance of it, they look really good. And that's kind of what film did. Film was balanced, so you bought and chose the role of film for whatever it is that you wanted to do on a given day. And when you develop those films, color filters and stuff were used to compensate for white balance issues, for not shooting in pure daylight, etc. But in digital, we have so much control that we always feel like we have to hammer. Here's 400H. Let me show you the Pro 160 NS. It's also a soft contrast film that was really geared for portraits, and it leans a little more warm in the greens, a little more red tones in the skins, but still has beautiful skin tones, and just its overall mix is different. Different. Let's zoom in on the face here. I'm going to switch between these. Here is 400H, and here is the new 160NS. You can see that the differences are not astounding. This is what I want to really plant in the head of all of us watching, even if you don't use my presets. We have this mindset that when we edit with digital, everything needs to be this over the top before and after. Everything needs to be a sledgehammer. We need to push sliders to the extreme. Super clarity or super softness, super saturation or super low. We feel like we always have to drive everything hard in digital. And one of the things that editing with film, it not only makes it so you can have a preset and you just know it's going to work on just any photo, like 400H, like 160NS, like Portra 400, like Ektar, it's pretty much just going to work anywhere and you can apply it to batches and things like that. You save all that time in post-production, then you can quickly go in and you can customize individual images. You can go into Photoshop and do more advanced edits. You can do Loomis, you can do 
chemical emulsions like platinum, you can do black and whites, you can do more advanced pictorialist effects, things like that. If you're spending more than an hour doing the fundamental editing of a portrait session and more than three hours doing the basic editing of a wedding, being ready to show to a client, you're throwing away time because there's no need in a good workflow for either of those things to take longer than that. Now, while films like Portrait and the Fuji Pro series were kind of geared towards portraits, that doesn't mean they don't work amazing for other things. Let's take a street scene here and compare these as well. Here is 400H. So notice what's happening. We're getting really nice, soft color balance, nothing over the top. We're not trying to do a sledgehammer. We're not trying to do HDR. Not that that's wrong. Wrong. It's just not always what you need. And generally, if you start more subtle, you get a better perspective in your edits. I want you to look again at the difference between 400H and 160 NS. Notice how the greens are a bit warmer. The blues are a little more intense. The reds, there's a little bit more saturation in 160. The grain, of course, is going to be a little bit finer, which may not show up a lot depending on the screen you're watching this on, but we have defined those differences in the preset. So you're going to find those nuances to be very present. There's more of a cooler, yellowish, greenish softness to 400H. It's very good, but it's distinct. Whereas the 160, you get a little bit more magenta, but at the same time, sort of a cool feeling. I think it's a really nice combination. My go-to presets will often be Portra. Maybe I want a little bit more red, so I'll go to Ektar. It's actually a phenomenal film in real life and as a preset. 400H tends to be very neutral and true to life, as does 160. Fuji has a reputation for that. So does this mean we should soft edit everything and always kind of have this filmic look? No, I just tend to use that as my starting point and it works really good most of the time. Just don't be a sledgehammer. Here's a raw file taking on my Sony A7R Mark II of Thor's well in Oregon. Look at the raw file. Let's reset. Shift Command R. Here's the raw file out of camera. Now this is very flat. Right? There's a lot of light, there's a ton of dynamic range here, but I balance the exposure using zones to try and maximize what I could fit in this flat Sony file. I used natural HDR, I used elegance mask. Look at the file I got of this. This makes a great before and after, right? We love to show these kind of things on the internet. This was exposed correctly for what I wanted to do, and it was edited correctly to really bring out that high dynamic range landscape. It's one of my favorite landscapes. But even this, you'll note, it's not a sledgehammer. I didn't go down here and just crank the clarity way up and say, let's go super HDR for the sake of it, right? Let's make it super crazy and over the top. There's still a balance of tone, nuance, and contrast. Every color is not hypersaturated. The blues are pulled down. The oranges are balanced. It's not going crazy. Let's go back to 160 nits and 400H for just a second and look at a few more examples. Here's another one of the Fruitmonger. And this, again, raw file out of camera. Let's go to 400H right here in Filmus 2.3. Raw, 400H, very versatile. 160NS, also very versatile. In this photo, which has a lot of yellows and greens, you can kind of really see those differences, but you can also see how the flesh tones of each of these are distinct and neither are wrong. There's a lot of debate about color. All the time we're debating, people are selling gadgets, they're making workshops, what's the right color? It's much like, what is the right exposure? And if you've been to one of my free Shadow Hackers workshops, link in the comments, you know that there is no right exposure. I could do 400H and then just go to the white balance over here and turn it up a few points, and I would bring a little bit more of a magenta kind of warmth into the skin tones. But that's not the same as the nuance I get, or the speed, by quickly going and selecting a film emulsion that had slightly different color nuance. What you see happening, and you can play with this in your own images, even if you're not using these presets. See how small those are? Look at those curves over on the right, and look at how slightly they're changing, and yet that, along with the channels and other details, is having a dramatic effect on the images. When you're dealing with the nuance of color, you don't just drag it way down. You'll quickly overdo it. In fact, oftentimes, if I'm looking at an image and saying, no, for this look, we want a little bit more magenta or a little bit more green, I'm actually adjusting. You can select the points here, and I will often 
enter single point adjustments and then analyze that and look at it. You can see how quickly this turned to this kind of magenta cast versus a nice natural film-like feel. Not every tool you use needs to hit different extremes. The tiny difference between one look and another, between the way you shift a color slider or use light, between 400H and 160 can actually be a big difference. Here's our raw photo of our model. We have beautiful late evening light. There's cool color on the bricks in the background. We have a little strobe on the face. Let's again go to 400H right here. And it looks beautiful. We have these nice warm skin tones, a little bit of green, but not in a gross way at all. I would absolutely use this. Let's look at 160 NS and notice how it changes the whole scene. There's a little bit more red now in those skin tones, but it's very balanced. It's not unnatural. The greens are a little bit richer. There's a little more punch to the saturation. Now we could then go and say, let's use Portra. Let's use Portra 160. Let's use Ektar 100. The truth is all of these would work. And all of these, if you showed them to an untrained eye, there wouldn't be that huge of a difference but your eye isn't untrained. You're looking at a visualization here. You're trying to create a nuance. And oftentimes you will come across photos where you're edited and you'll feel like, uh, it feels a little green. Uh, it feels a little magenta. And so our default is to go up and just bump the white balance. That is a way to do it. But the more I use film looks in Lightroom and in Capture One and in RAW, what I'll often do is just switch to another film. Okay, here's our four final edits. They all look really nice, really nuanced, and really balanced. I hope you guys found this useful. If you do use my Filmist pack, if you have Filmist 2, definitely go download 2.3 and get this new Fuji preset. But if you don't, go download the free pack at least just to play with some film and just think about the nuance of color and how slight shifts in those color curves in your hue saturation channels, these can make a huge difference in your photos. Hope you guys found this useful. We will see you next time. Peace.